what's going on guys welcome back to the channel we have ds trucks live and in person with his 2020 450 and today we're going to be installing a plow kit to the front of this and i am going to show you the correct way the ptt way because i'm tired of seeing all the hacks run everything crisscross through here to hook all this stuff up so let's do it the right way do it yourself save some bucks and just follow this video all right guys let's do it We got a bag full of wiring. Looks like that's going to be, you know, battery supply to the front of the plow. We got some, it's like DRL, so maybe headlight connectors for the plow. What we got here? A control harness. This is probably, yep, okay, so this is going uh, through the cab. This is going to need uh, 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 12 volts with the key on so we can operate that fish stick. And then what we got in here, we got plug and harness kit. Let's see what's in here. Sean, how much was this uh, this kit, all this wiring kit right now? 1600 Uh, Well, really, it was 1500 bucks. My total bill was 1600 but I picked up a couple gallons of uh, snowplow fluid, so. What do we got here? Uh, a bunch of relays. Looks like probably going to that isolation module. <laughs> probably gonna find here shortly okay so this is going to our headlights so we got looks like the right harness so far because we uh, do not have halogens on this truck so that so far is good and then uh, what's this box called module kit three four that's what we want smaller one. I just put one in uh, last weekend and uh, well no I guess the module is the same size. They gotta be pretty pretty generic I would assume. Right there. So this is gonna be our brain of our whole plow system. And then another another pigtail kind of gives us a little brief overview of what we're gonna be looking at. So now to the meat and potatoes, you're going to wonder why or how all this is going to be attached to the vehicle and it is all with this. We got some beefy, beefy powder coated mounts. This box is pretty heavy. I'm not going to lift that up until I need to, to put it on. A whole bunch of fasteners. Got some instructions. Um, this is going to be pretty self-explanatory, I guess. If you guys can do uh, Legos, then I'm sure you guys can follow directions and put this on. It's the wiring that is the trick um, in routing it in a correct fashion. Not only for people who have to take the truck apart later for warranty work, but people who are just going to be servicing uh, this stuff themselves and are going to have to get around it and have to start disconnecting or cutting it. We don't want to do that. So, uh, without further ado, let's get this bracket up. Alright guys, so the next thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to take this front bumper off because it's going to aid in moving all the wires through down around the grill once we get all that stuff out. We're going to go for, uh, you got a couple things you can do. Either you can go for these 215s here or these 215s here, whichever you want to do. Um, I mean, I guess I'll leave it up to you. Uh, and then if you come around the front of the truck, we got uh, a couple of... Um, 18s up here that we're going to have on each side of these tow hooks and we're just going to get the whole front bumper off. We're going to have an electrical connector for the um, uh, headlight, for the fog lights rather, and any modules or anything that we got over here. So next scene you're going to see, bumpers on the ground. Alright guys, this can be kind of tricky. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to show you guys before uh, I continued. So right here we got one, two, three, four, five clips and we got five clips over here. There are two different ones. We got these on the bottom and these on the top. 
and once you get those all removed this piece is literally going to pop out like this don't try fighting these plastic pieces by themselves although they do come apart and you can see once you get it off the fingers you got to squeeze it's way easier and safe and cost effective if you just remove it all as one piece so i just want to out that one that to you before we uh, got any further because uh, i don't want you breaking any plastics all right guys so here we go we got the bumper off we're already here trim clips everything removed the one bumper harness connect you guys are gonna have to mess with um, pretty much all the plastics and everything stayed on um, then the lights were disconnected like I said it was just this one connector um, and the bumper pretty much just sits here just like you see here so if you come over here back to the truck I got unhooked the block heater cable it was kind of kind of sitting like this kind of got that out of my way and you can see how it opened up uh, the front of this 450 looks and what we're gonna do is we're gonna mock up uh, all these fine powder coated parts over here and look at the instructions and see what our first step is in installing these brackets onto your Super Duty. All right, so the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna take both of these nuts off and this bracket on both sides and we're just gonna let this sway bar hang. That's it. All right, and then once you get the nuts off, just go ahead and pull this down. And it's not gonna fall anymore. We got the sway bar resting on this long drag link here. So we're just gonna rust it so it's not falling. We're gonna wind up wiggling these things off because the actual plow bracket is going to be our sway bar bracket, so. All right, guys, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to need to take the fasteners off for this crossbar so that we can put the bolts through the bracket. So we're going to take these two 15 millis. Both sides, and then you guys can see these are gonna pull out. Don't pull them out yet, let's just get the nuts off both of them so the bracket's not falling on us and then uh, I'll show you what the next step's gonna be. All right guys, so once you take those long finger bolts out of this bracket, you can put the plow bracket, which in the directions it shows you which one's left and which one's right, those bolts go through the bracket, back through the original bracket, and just kind of sit there and I've got these all finger tight. Then once you're done with that, you can go ahead and slip your sway bar back into position and go ahead and put the nuts on that you took off on both sides. And then we're gonna go ahead and just repeat the steps and tightening it and just hammer them down. All right guys, so we ran into a bit of an issue and this is probably gonna be at 450 specific. There is not enough room between the radiator and the mount. So each side gives you about an inch of required space. But if you have a 450, then you have this extra radiator in between this area and the Fisher setup did not accommodate for this radiator. So we've got to figure out how to get more space for our radiator so we've got to find a solution we don't know what that's going to be yet but we'll touch base with you guys once we figure out a solution all right so our solution for this is to cut down our ears just a little bit because this radiator is too wide
a solution for our radiator that is specific to the F450s. And this is a coolant radiator down below and it does not have enough room for a Fisher snow, uh, snowplow mount. Uh, probably not enough room for a Western or even a Boss. But here's what we had to do to get the uh, snowplow mount to fit on our F450. Now what we did is we first of all notched our ears of our uh, radiator. Now these ears don't have coolant running in them but notching them just a little bit allows the radiator to scoot over this way, scoot over this way just a little bit more and we also had to modify our bracket. The slides on this side were not adjustable. We came in and we trimmed the slide just a little bit so that the ears could slide in to the bracket on this side a little bit more this way. And we also trimmed our ears on our radiator just a little bit. You can see that cut. We trimmed our ears just a little bit to allow for essentially what looks like two inches more of space than what's there from the factory. Now, if you don't have an F450 and you don't have this coolant uh, radiator, this extra cooling radiator, then this won't be an issue for you. But for us, this was an issue and this is our solution that we found. See you guys at the next scene. All right guys, so once we got the plow brackets all installed, everything looks good, ready to be, bumper ready to be installed, you're gonna move up top and you're gonna wanna take the whole air dam off. There's a whole bunch of push pins that you pull the middle part up off of. Check it. These are all, all around the perimeter. And you pop the middle out and pop these off. Get the whole black piece off, go set it aside. And then you're gonna go through and you're gonna take off all these 10 millimeters off the perimeter of the front grill. After that, on each corner, right in the front of the grill, DS can show you guys there is a stud. There's a nut on the stud. See how the grill's moving back and forth? Both sides, top, two 10 milling nuts, grill's coming off. This is plastics. Here. I've never taken a 450 grill off, yeah. <coughs> yep. Yeah. So it could be a hidden so bolt. It looks like. Yeah, we got the. Uh, looks like there's a bolt behind here. So we need to figure out how to take this lower trim piece off the grill. I see the, there we go. Just didn't want to break nothing. So a bunch of plastic clips that are gonna hold this piece all together in the front of your 450. See all these plastic clips, you guys? So that's what you're taking off. And we got, uh, looks like a 10 milli bolt holding that together right here. you should be able to pull your grill out. Man, that was a scary thing. Obviously, you don't want to do this in the cold because your clips probably are not going to come out. 
And I forgot, dude's got a front camera and a washer jet. So if you guys don't know how to take that off, if you spread this black clip, that is gonna remove that washer nozzle. And then this, we just have a one button connector for the actual camera. So take the grill, we're gonna set it down over here, out of the way. Guys, so both sides are the same. We got a 10 milli, a 10 milli, and we got a 10 milli here right on the side. And once you get that loose, you can see the headlight is gonna need to be, hey Sean, show them this right here. See this clip right here? Your headlight's sitting in here. You just need to unclip that right there. And then just work it from out around the fender, like so. And these LED headlights only have one connector, so just go ahead and unplug it. I wanted to show the steps that we're at right now. So I went and took a head, I went ahead and removed the grill like you guys saw. And now I went ahead and removed all the 10 millis that are fastening the plastic core support to the actual core support. And you can see how loose everything is. I went ahead and taken this loose. There's a seven milli holding that together right there, you guys can see the hole. Uh, a couple trim clips, got some 13s right here. Again, 13s here, uh, 10 millis, and then everything gets pretty, pretty darn loose, which is uh, gonna allow us to properly orientate all these wires. And I even took the driver's side battery out because we are gonna be going right through here with all of our stuff and our isolation module is going to go right here so uh, i just want to do a, a quick re a quick recap with what the truck is going to look like after you get the grill off and everything and we're going to start putting the wires in all right guys so i don't know uh what kit you guys are using if you're using the western the fisher or the boss but we're using the fisher and i'm starting with the control harness that is going in the vehicle and it looks like this. It's got all the sheathing on it, and this goes to the electronic stick inside the truck. And I wanna show you guys where I went through the firewall. Right by the master cylinder, or the brake booster rather, uh, depending on what model you have, you'll see this rubber grommet going through the firewall. And there is a rubber nub right on the grommet. You can see the wire coming through. I cut that rubber nub off completely flush and shoved it through the hole into the cab. And then you guys can see right where I came out, right by the harness, right through that rubber grommet and into the cab of the vehicle. And you want to take note to make sure you leave yourself enough slack so that you can hook up your plow stick. So we're going to continue forward and we'll see you in the next scene. All right, guys, the next harness I went for was this one and it goes from headlight to headlight and one side is blue and the other side is green so what i wound up doing was when i went and um, loosened the core support i was able to fish this wire all the way through above the radiator all the way across you see I have it zip tied to some existing uh, wire harness and then I came down through here you guys can see down next to that factory harness down and around the metal core support where I have put the original factory connector and zip tied and then I left my uh, plow that is going my plow connector that's going to my headlight so I got a bunch of zip ties to cut I did go ahead and mount everything back in my two 13s 13s over here traded out a push pin for a zip tie tether and one here just so that uh, you know I had a little better support uh, going behind everything and then I did the same thing um, for the driver side um, now you guys are probably wondering you know what if you used the green or blue on the other side well I mean 
I guess it all depends on where you put your module. I am doing everything on the driver side and the blue leg of the harness is way longer so you know you'd have to figure if you're going to put that on that side or the module on this side and then where you're going to run your your controller everything i'm going through is on the driver's side so the last one i did i put the green on this side and i haven't had a problem so um next scene i'm going to get the next harness that came in the kit and we are going to loosely mock that up all right we have finally got the driver side done i know it looks kind of messy but uh, everything is ran in a fashion that will allow everything to come apart for anybody needing to service this truck um, everything every all of the extra cabling i was able to coil right up there in the fender and everything for the most part it's just going to run right next to the battery um you know as best as i could i thought this was kind of slick how i had this mounted here um and then i literally just coiled it up like a garden hose and just kind of shoved everything right here and if i need to service everything it'll all literally come right up and i'll just coil it all back down uh, i didn't think there's any real reason or need to uh put some zip ties in here it's not really going uh anywhere so um brief overview just wanted to give you uh an idea of where to properly run this stuff um you know not to be rigged i did uh remove and install the headlights a couple times to a couple times to make sure you know i had enough slack for you know my electrical connectors and that you know these harnesses aren't gonna hit and everything so um let me get the uh, let me get this headlight installed and we'll see what it looks like with both headlights installed on this 2020 F450. We ran into an issue and the running lights and the high beams didn't work after we plugged and played all of our harnesses. So what I found out was, so we have two connectors going to um, the truck. This pin here was right where this white one was. I had to switch the blank plug and take this pin out and put it here. This is going to our headlight. This is our factory connector. Why was this circuit empty in this plug? They did not have this pinned right. So I had to find the park from this harness and it was in this pin. I had to de-pin it put it in the correct slot so now that it matches this. So we put the headlight in and the running lights now work. We got we got our running lights figured out. So I'm gonna have to cut the main because I cannot put, I cannot de-pin and pin this. I can but I don't have those materials necessary. So I have to bypass this and I have to go around it using this circuit that I just cut and I'm going right to the body harness. I'm totally bypassing that. That fixed. So then we noticed that this connector they gave us only came with pins on the top row. Well, look what we have a pin here on the bottom row. I had to add an extra circuit and cut this circuit because I cannot add it to this. This is a communication LIN wire that is going to control the module underneath the headlight assembly to turn on and off the brights. Here is our module communication wire and here is the harness pin that I add to the plow wiring for the communication so that it can turn the brights on and off. This is a very important or your lights are not going to work correctly. So to all that are installing this, please, please note your headlight connectors may not be the same as the plow harness. The headlights worked, the turn signals worked, the running lights and the high beams did not. So we had to make, it took us a couple hours to figure this out. I'm not going to bullshit. It was kind of a pain. We were about to give up, but then Sean started talking about why do we have this extra wire down here? And I went to the wiring diagram and found out what this is controlling. I'm like, get out of here. Are you serious? What happens if I just add that circuit that we don't have 
cut and then just hook that up there and everything worked. So I'm going to OE fasten all of this mumbo jumbo together and I'm going to show you what it looks like prior to us installing it. Then we're going to put the headlight in and then we're going to put the bumper on. All right, guys, we are all done. Finally, through the trials and tribulations of installing wiring from a 17 through 19 onto a 20, their connectors were not the same for the wiring for the high beams and the running lights. You guys can see uh, we got the cables ran right here freshly cut valance did not take it off the bumper mocked up trimmed looks professional and you guys can see there's no garbage rat's nest of wiring running every which way except for this coil it's just coiled and just neatly set in there um, and if it needs to be serviced it all just comes out and unravels right here all right guys so now we have the plow on the f450 it's all wired up but we have some issues now what we found that night when we were doing the wiring my mechanic my brother from another mother power stroke tech talk with a rod was going through the standard check after getting everything wired up and he, you know, instructed me to check the high beams, check the blinkers, check the running lights. And what we found is the blinkers, I'm sorry, the park light, the running lights for the front headlights were not working as well as the high beams were not working. And we couldn't figure out why. What we did is we looked on the computer at the Ford shop manuals and we found that the pin out for 2020 compared to 2019 for LED headlights is different. So in 2020, a few pins moved around, still pretty much the same functionality and everything, but when Ford updated these headlights, they changed a few of the pins around. So the snowplow wiring would have had to reflect a 2020, not a 2019 and we had the wiring for 2019 so it totally messed us up and the only reason we figured out what was going on is because we actually physically pulled up the wiring pin out from 19 and compared it to 20 now from there we moved some pins around to get our headlights to work so that I can make it home but we didn't have the plow at the shop so we couldn't tell what kind of wiring and how to rewire everything in order to get the headlights to work so you know it's kind of a weird thing now right now my headlights should be on but with the plow here the headlights are not on but the brights are on so it's still not quite working right and it might be possible to fix this or rewire this to work but I did call the snow plow uh, company where I bought all this stuff like I said, guys, this stuff is not cheap. I paid like $1,600 for this whole setup. So I'm a little bit disappointed that I have to go through this. And it wasn't nearby either. I went, I stopped in Ohio when I was down in there picking up a, uh, picking up a, what was I picking up? Oh, I was picking up a snowplow. So I stopped there and picked up uh, the parts to do this truck. But they told me that because I moved a couple pins on the original, on the harness that they sold me that they could not cover that part but they could offer me a, um, a a new harness at cost which is not totally exciting i mean whatever i don't care about the money that much it's going to cost a hundred dollars that's life but you know i would like for them to you know cover the cost considering they gave me a 2019 wire harness not a 2020 and they did acknowledge that they gave me the wrong one and that things changed once they looked in their computer they realized that things changed in 2020 now i'm kind of debating if i should go in here test light this thing out and figure out what if i can find the hot wire to bring on my headlights my blinkers are working my running lights are working but my headlights 
are my high beams are stuck on and my headlights don't work i might be able to figure out i don't know if i should you know go ahead now it's going to require me to have to tear down the front end again take out the headlights again do everything a lot of the wiring over again which is not cool and it's going to require me to reverse the modifications to the headlight wiring that were made in order to get me home and get me working get get me home with everything working so uh i don't know if i'll which route i'll go but comment below and tell me what you guys think about that you know it was a big fiasco getting everything working uh you also saw that the f450 has that extra radiator down below between the uh frame rails there which is unique to the f450 which made things work a little differently at least i can uh so we had to modify that but at least the way it sits now i can make it i could plow with this if i had to all the controls as far as the isolation module is concerned all the wiring that my mechanic did was done correctly it just so happened that we had the wrong parts so i don't know what the solution is going to be here uh Let's see here, here's the controller. And like I said, everything works, guys. Everything works here. I will say this, this plow, this truck carries this plow very well, guys. Very well, very well. You know what, it squats what? Maybe squats an inch. Once it picks it up, it handles that weight guys no problem so that's what went horribly wrong thank you for watching to the end if you did uh snow plow for the f450 i'm very happy with the work that my mechanic did he he installed things in a way where the truck could still be serviceable later on down the road if it ever had any issues um and uh, being a ford mechanic and seeing so many of these trucks come in he 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 said that he sees a lot of issues with the way plow harnesses are ran and makes them kind of hard to service so i'm glad he helped me and he helped me out really quickly and i'm really appreciative that he helped me out so fast but anyway guys that's it for the video uh comment below what you uh, would like us like to see next should i do the wiring should i get the wiring from uh the same company or should i just try to figure out this pin out they've already ordered it but it's a long drive i'm wondering if i could just figure out what if i if i have any what happened like why it does what could because everything with the 19 led the wiring is there all the wiring is essentially there but it's just a couple pins that moved around and it's throwing everything off so anyway guys that's it for the video this is ds trucks my name is sean this is our 2020 f450 so if you are interested in this kind of content stay tuned to the channel see you in the next video over and out Bye.